Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. If you have missed my past couple of videos, I announced that I am going to be answering questions that were sent to me by subscribers to my mailing list. And by the way, you can subscribe by clicking the link that's in the description of this video. So I want to continue on with that theme in today's video, where I'm going to be talking about a gray divorce and how to navigate the particular challenges that come along with a gray divorce. So if you're unfamiliar with this term, it's it's typically uh, referring to a separation or a divorce that involves individuals who are 50 years or older. And it is meant to particularly highlight the unique considerations that these type of people will um, go through because, you know, sometimes at this point, family, the family structure that younger couples would have when they are divorcing, specifically divorcing a narcissist, are no longer there. So parents are sometimes no longer uh, alive. We have siblings who may either not be alive or there's been an issue with the siblings. So they're no longer in the picture for one reason or another. Um, there can be uh, grown children and grandchildren and that kind of thing. So first, I want to just cover some of these complications. Again, the the concern of grown children, empty nest syndrome, the overall restructuring of life. It's important that you take take note if you fall into this category that your divorce is going to be different than most of the divorces that are spoken about in generalities on social media, including YouTube. Um, and and even on this channel, you have to acknowledge that your divorce is going to include things and also preclude things that would normally be affecting somebody who's getting divorced when they're uh, 20, 30, or 40. And uh, take that into consideration because, uh, and I make that distinction so that you understand some of the things that a 20-year-old will need to take accountability for or need to build in a support system for you don't need to do that. So it can be easy to say, I don't need to do that. But there are other considerations that you need to recognize, hey, I do need that. And you need to be the one to start implementing uh, the the necessary steps in order to secure that kind of support or that plan moving forward. So let's address the first uh, the first concept of things that people will face, which is the presence of grown children and potentially um, grandchildren, right? So adult children who are independent, right? And this means that these adult children have their own lives, right? They have their own issues potentially with their own marriage or their own children. They could be growing a business or trying to climb the corporate ladder. So they have a lot of their own uh, things happening. And sometimes when a great divorce is happening, the parents want more support from their children because, you know, they poured so much into their children when they were growing up. And now it's kind of like, hey, I need you guys to be around. I need you to help me out with some things. And it can be difficult for the children, although they're adults, to give the kind of time and give the kind of considerations that the parents are needing or even expecting, uh, especially uncommunicated expectations, right? So these are things that you just assume your child should know to do, but they don't know that they need to do those things. Uh, this can create a lot of tension in that relationship. Additionally, if the children are already grown up, we're, I'm going to assume that these two people who are married are the parents of the adult children. So your adult children grew up in a home where there was two people, right? There's two adults, two parents present. And now this idea that you guys are splitting, especially when you're divorcing a narcissist, the kids are a lot less likely to try to get involved and figure out who's right or wrong or why this is happening. It's likely that they just kind of check out of this entire scenario because they just assume this is your guys's issue and that you guys will solve it. So in other words, they're not looking to get involved. Oftentimes adult children, when there's a great divorce happening, do not want to get involved in the minutia. They don't want to know all of the details. They don't want to feel like they have to pick sides because they've already lived their childhood, right? They're, uh, they're removed from the situation that requires them 
or or feels good to them to have two parents in the house. They're just not in that frame of mind anymore. And uh, additionally, they might be focused on things that you find insignificant or unimportant during this time. So, um, so for example, children wanting to know, well, what's going to happen during the holidays? Instead of asking, you know, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What can I do to support you? They're wondering, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for my children? What is going to be the plan mo moving forward for, you know, traditions and celebrations and uh, how how potentially even our assets going to be divided, right? So when adult children remember that that I'm specifically speaking of kids who maybe didn't even know that they were being raised by a narcissist. You have to think about that influence. You have to think about the influence this parent has had on their children the entire time that they've been raised, that they are now adults, that they potentially even have their own children, the advice that they've been given. So you need to understand that there's a certain level of normalcy that has now occurred for these adult children to be wondering why you're getting divorced in the first place. Yeah, but that's just dad. Yeah, but that's just how mom is. Well, why now? Why is this a big problem now? Right? And so they might not understand why you're why you're waiting so long like hey this has always been a problem you didn't see it or you didn't want to do anything about it two decades three decades ago why now right so your children might have their own um analytical reasons for why they're questioning what you're doing instead of trying to be there to support what you're going through and you also need to understand that there is definitely the potential for the way the narcissist thinks and the way the narcissist reasons to have gotten into the methodology that your children now think through, right? The lens that your children now reason through could have very well been uh, influenced by by the narcissist when they were being raised uh, as kids. I'm going to get into how to uh, suggestions on how to navigate all of this in uh, in a little bit. But one of the things that I do want to say is very important for people who are going through a great divorce is immovable boundaries. You must make predetermined choices about what you're willing to talk about with your kids, what you're not willing to talk about with your kids. And if you're going to have a conversation, when, where, and how long you're going to have that conversation for ahead of time, because these conversations can get very draining because your children may very well be wanting to revisit um, uh, memories from decades ago that either you don't remember that you're unwilling to even look at, you find insensitive that they would be bringing those things up to you when you're going through a divorce, you know, and at all. And this concept of being divorced has never crossed your mind. Um, and it can cause more division than is necessary. And so one of the things I do want to mention really quickly right now before I get into all of my suggestions on how to navigate these things is that you do have firm predetermined choices on what you're going to talk about with your kids, when you're going to talk about that, how long you're going to talk about it for, and ways how you're going to word these conversations as well. Again, it's very important that you become healthy because everything that is going on in your life flows through you. Your finances through, flow through you. Your conversations with your children flow through you. Your relationship with your grandkids flows through you. So if you are not taking care of yourself, it will be very easy for things to get more unhealthy because it, it's flowing through you while you're trying to process what is occurring right now in your life. Okay, another thing that you're already going to be going through and uh, potentially maybe you didn't know that this divorce was coming or maybe you did know, but typically if there's an issue in a relationship and especially if it's an unhealthy one, the, the parents find ways to reason it out of why they're staying together. We're going to stay together until the kids are out of the house is a very common reason that I hear. A lot of times people have not thought through the decision and it just seems what's right. It just seems the easiest. It just seems like let's just push through and get through these, you know, last 12 years or however long you have. But you don't understand all of the things that are going to be occurring then. Not only is this atmosphere of toxicity, of hostility, of control, manipulation, whatever, continuing to grow. So your children are just kind of, you know, absorbing everything that's in that atmosphere. But you're not thinking about what it's going to be like for you to process through being an empty nester. Okay, so now we have not only empty nest syndrome, but we're processing through a divorce, potentially 
a very high conflict, um, high control, coercive control situation where maybe you don't know how to do all of the things and how to navigate all of the the court things that come along with that. Well, we got empty nest syndrome. Maybe you're reinventing yourself as well, right? What does it mean to be free of children? What does it mean to be free of this marriage and all these other things? So empty nesters, when these divorces, when divorces and empty nest syndrome coincide, it can take people uh, a, a long time or a longer time to to process through what they are experiencing because they never anticipated um, the way that this would impact their identity, right? This sense of loss, this sense of loneliness, this sense of even grief when the children leave the home and how this is now not just a loss of their kids because they're leaving, but also the loss of their person who, even if it was toxic, they did spend a lifetime together, right? They had spent up until this time together. And maybe now is a realization of things that you wish you could have, have have done with your kids, but you didn't or you couldn't because of the relationship that you were in. So the 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 issue of regret, right? The absence of these memories that you wish you would have had, or just the way that you were enraptured in doing certain tasks for your kids or for your family that you no longer need to do. There's no longer a spouse that you need to do anything for. Whether or not you wanted to do that is is a completely different situation, just the loss of that daily routine of having children in your house, even if you're not really, you know, caring for them like little babies, but they were, they were filling up space in your home. And when, when we don't appropriately plan for these things, and we don't have a plan for how we're going to process grief, how we're going to experience loneliness, how we're going to process through um, regret potentially, then these things can compound on each other. And can lead into um, distractions, unhealthy habits, further further loss of identity because your identity was totally in being a parent. Um, it, you know, questioning your personal fulfillment, questioning whether you're in, your, you're in the right job, all of that like life crisis kind of stuff that um, that people talk about really come because there's there's this lack of personal fulfillment that was always there. They just had never had the, they were always able to easily distract themselves because the house was filled up. Even with the spouse I don't like, well, guess what? It's it's now part of my routine to try to avoid the spouse or try to avoid a conversation with the spouse or avoid an argument with the spouse. And it's part of my routine to do that. Or, you know, my my kids, they're gone out of the house, but I need to stay awake until 11 or 12 until they come home. I need to send them a text. I need to find out where they are. I need to be here, you know, awake. So so even your routine is wrapped up into what other people in your house are doing. When that's taken away, it's like, okay, where's my next distraction coming from? So you never re recognize that there was a deep sense of loneliness, a deep sense of not being fulfilled in your own life that you were able to distract yourself in. Uh, while your house was filled up with people. So again, just having somebody who is trained in this, who can help you prepare for how do, how do we process through all of these years, potentially decades of uh, emotions that never went answered for. And then just in general, we're having a restructuring of life because um, because like I mentioned about the empty nest syndrome, even if you didn't like your spouse or even if it was a situation where one spouse traveled for work or, you know, had you, maybe you had two um, residences or you had a beach house or you had a uh, house in the mountains or something like that. And the other spouse would go there frequently for, for long periods of time. It's still, it's still knowing, Hey, at some point they're coming back. Hey, at some point, um, you know, we're, we're still going to have Christmas in our home. We're still going to have, you know, birthday parties or graduation parties or whatever in our home. We're still going to do these things. That loss, that like permanency of, okay, these things are now separate. Now I, I have to build a different life. What a lot of people don't do is emotionally move on and they think they have. They think I've emotionally moved on. This is just signing a piece of paper. This divorce is just a, a, a formality. But they don't recognize that they didn't actually emotionally fully heal and sever what was already established. They were still looking forward to the Christmases, still looking forward to the family vacations, still looking forward to doing these things together without issue because they didn't want to identify their own uh, needs that were not being met. 
that that they weren't meeting. Okay. It's not, it's once you recognize somebody is incapable of meeting your needs of, of doing what you want them to do, you need to really take responsibility and say, Hey, maybe this is not my person. Maybe I don't want this relationship anymore. But so many people will say, well, it's for the kids or, you know, it's just until such and such time. And that's fine. Your decision, whatever you decide to do is your decision. I, pa- I do not pass judgment either way on what you decide to do. It's just understanding that when you do that and you don't take time to do the emotional work, when everything hits you all at once, like, hey, now you have to be completely financially uh, savvy. Maybe your spouse was the one who was paying all of the bills. And now this is a skill set you need to have. And you didn't take time to prepare for that. The emotional overwhelm, the mental overwhelm, and now the intellectual overwhelm of all these new skills and new habits that you have to learn and develop, it can be completely shocking to the system where it's like you just don't want to do anything. You just don't want to make any progress on this. And if you're dealing with a narcissist, the narcissist will absolutely use this opportunity uh, of your weakness or your your being paralyzed by overwhelm to come in and try to take advantage. And so the, again, the point of this video is to help you understand that if you fall into the category of getting divorced, uh, of a great divorce, then you do need, there are things that you need to prepare for. Like, have you actually considered doing these things? One of the things that I, uh, I want to kind of move into what can we do or what are some things to consider if you are uh, a great divorcee, then I want you to think about your communication. And what I mean by that is in every single type of relationship that you have in your life, you know, do you see a group of friends for, you know, to play a game every week or, you know, are you involved with a group at church? Whatever it is for you, think about these categories that you have relationships in and think about how well you are at communicating with people in these groups. Why do I bring this up? Because oftentimes people who have gotten to the place of divorcing when they're older is that they're not good at voicing their needs. They're not even good at identifying their needs, let alone communicating what it is that they need, what they want, what they feel, what they think. They can't communicate any of this stuff to other people because they've never really taken time to get in touch with it themselves. And so one of the first things that I want you to do is take accountability, like just take an account, like how good am I at communicating? How open am I about communicate c- communication, even with myself? Can you tell yourself what it is you need? Can you tell yourself what it is that you're feeling? And start practicing with the people that you do feel comfortable with about being vulnerable and communicating directly. I always encourage people to seek uh, professional help. When you are divorcing a narcissist, I don't care what the situation is, I highly encourage you to get a professional who understands specifically narcissistic abuse, not just abuse in general, not just a high conflict divorce, which is what a lot of attorneys are going to try to, you know, group you into not understanding coercive control, not understanding uh, proxy abuse through the court systems, third party abuse through the through the parties inside the court system. They're not going to understand that. And they can often be doing more damage to you because you don't even know that you're being abused because you just assume that you can trust the system that you're in. And that's just not the case. I always encourage people I don't care what state you're in. I don't care what state of mind you're in. I think you need a professional. You need a professional because it you're you're taking on too much of the burden on your own. And there's a lot of time that you could be saving. There's a lot of heartache you could be saving by just finding somebody that you click with that can help you um, understand the division of assets, the decision that decisions that you're making, the way that you're communicating to your children and your grandchildren, um, potential other considerations that might need to be taken into account and and just making sure that you are setting up this next uh portion of your life journey out on the right foot you want this to you want to end this divorce with as much celebration for what you have had as possible and as much excitement for the future as possible okay so a professional really will help you to be able to do that i also encourage you to embrace the fact that you are going through a very big change. You are going through a very big change. It's okay to change. So if you want to change things that you do, if you want to change up your routine, if you want to try something completely outside of where wherever you have ever tried before, 
you know, I want you to give yourself permission to go experience and, um, and, and try new things. There's no limit. You're the only limit. So doing self-care is important. That's your regular maintenance of your emotional, mental, physical, financial, uh, and spiritual health. You want to constantly have that. That's great. You also want to feed the part of you that's you know, adventurous and likes to try things. You want to get involved in different things. So give yourself permission to go try new things, go make new friends. You don't have to hold on to the old things. Okay. Cause a lot of times there, are, there's also division of friendships, right? Especially if you've done life with other couples and your, your kids have grown up together or whatever, and you're, you're experiencing like, Hey, in the divorce, I'm going to lose half my friend group. That's a very real thing. So I want you to give yourself permission to embrace the fact that things are changing and you have permission to change along with them. You can reinvent yourself through this process as well. In a great divorce, it is more important than other divorces. It's always important, but it is more important than other divorces that you are planning financially. Even if there's plenty of assets to be split or to be had, like that shouldn't even be a thing we're fighting about. I highly encourage you to get a forensic accountant involved in your case. You want to make sure that you are set up financially because you have less time available to earn back what, uh, what you might lose financially in this divorce. I do not believe in lack. I do not believe in limits. I believe the only limitations that we have are the ones that we put on ourselves and they are typically found between our ears. We think them up in our heads. However, that all being said, if you do not plan appropriately and are not thinking strategically, you can be giving up what is arguably your right to have simply because you just don't want to fight. You just want to move on. You just want to get out of this situation. And that is not smart financial planning. I have a whole course on financial recovery after narcissistic abuse. I have uh, finances are built into every single uh, part of my coaching because they are so important. They are, you know, there's a saying and it says money isn't everything, but it's right up there with oxygen, meaning we all need it. Okay. Yeah. It's not everything. Got it. But how long would you survive if you had none of it? And we really need, especially because Sometimes the development to, to earn money, you need to have a development of skill sets. You need to know how to transactually move value from one form to another. When you provide a certain form of value, it comes back to you in money. And if you don't know how to do that process, let alone develop a skill set that adds value to people that people are willing to trade you money for, it, it's a lot longer process for you because you're in a different season of your life. You're in a different mindset. You're in a completely different, you know, mental space. I'm not saying you can't do it, by the way. You absolutely can do it. You absolutely can learn a new thing, learn a new skill and learn how to monetize it. Absolutely. I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying it is, it is harder to convince yourself that this is what I'm going to do if that wasn't already in your heart before the divorce. And so I just don't want you to be losing out in the divorce because you you know, you just want to get out of the situation. Like, okay, he can have everything or okay, I'll just give her everything over here. And so we don't have to fight. It's it's not smart financial planning to go about that. Okay. And by the way, I do have a whole coaching session on financial rehabilitation alone, on your relationship with your finances that uh, that you can sign up for. It's in the description. The link is in the description of this video if you need that. And finally, I want you to start curating people that are willing to build relationship with you on your destiny, not your history. Maybe you meshed with these people because your kids were best friends or your kids were in the same soccer soccer club or, you know, whatever the case may be. That's all great. But I want you to, again, really just take a realistic look at what you're doing where you're going, and what kind of things you want to have in your life. While you are getting rid of the stuff that you do not need to have in your life, you are splitting up assets and furniture and 
whatever else you might be getting rid of, I want you to understand this is the time to overhaul your relationships as well. You need to start overhauling every part of your life to make sure that it matches with your destiny so that the rest of your time here is spent enjoying your life, truly uh, loving every day of your life. And it is completely possible even after this divorce, even if you're going through a horrific divorce with a narcissist. And finally, I want to mention one more thing about your children, which again, I, I mentioned um, ha hold, being able to hold space for your adult children if they want to bring up certain things like, hey, how come you didn't divorce dad when I was eight and this scenario happened? Or how come you didn't leave her when uh, you know I was 12 and she did this to me? You need to understand that your children have their own experience, have had their own experience with both you and your partner that you're now divorcing, and they remember things. Even if you're like, that's not even what happened. It doesn't matter. That's what they believe happened. It's what it's the it's the value that they have ascribed to that experience. And it is important that you recognize what they are saying. Not valid. You don't have to say that's completely true, but you do need to have the ability to hold the space for them to have these conversations so that they can process through not just the divorce itself, but what led up to the divorce through their own lens because they have had their own opinion, whether they have shared it with you when they were children or not, on what is going on in y'all's marriage, okay? And so it is important that you do not try to get into these conversations with your kids on a particularly high emotional day when you have court, when you're busy trying to prepare something for your attorney. You need to make sure that you are in the space emotionally, mentally, physically, to be able to hold space for your kids during these conversations so that you can actually start moving forward instead of just rehashing the past unto, unto no outcome, right? It's just like, hey, I want to talk about all the negative things of the past. If you're not in the right mindset to do that, you're going to be constantly bringing up, well, you know, your dad did that to me too, or, you know, your mom did that to me too. From your children's perspective, it's still your responsibility because you're an adult. Whether or not you were aware that this is a narcissistic uh, abuse and this is what narcissistic abuse looks like, feels like, sound like, when you were experiencing that abuse, it doesn't matter. Your children were children and they didn't have a choice about who their parents were. And from their perspective, it was your responsibility. They're going to want answers. And you need to understand that it's not always appropriate while they have questions. And I do believe you should make time to answer them. It isn't always appropriate to answer the question that they are asking at the time they are asking the question. You need to really check in with yourself, going back to my first suggestion on making sure that you know how to communicate even with yourself about your emotions, your thoughts, what's happening, how, how does this make you feel, where does your identity fit in all of the things that are occurring. If you can't do that, then it's going to be very difficult to hold space for somebody who's who it can seem is attacking you for allowing certain things to happen to them or for them to witness certain things or wondering why you you were experiencing certain thing and didn't make a different decision in the moment. So I hope all of that makes sense. I know that was a lot. Prayer is that this video does help you understand what you are going through when you are going through a great divorce and what you can expect in your recovery process and some of the things that are necessary, some of the tools that you will have to acquire in order to process through everything that has happened and make a future that you are excited about because your life isn't over just because you're getting divorced later on in life. Your life is just starting like anybody else who's getting divorced. It's about the, the foundation that you are laying and the way that you handle this change that's ultimately going to determine what the next part of your life looks like. If you need help walking through this type of divorce, you can join my narcissistic detox intensive. I want you to text me at 512-677-9322. In order to apply to join, you can join my 24-7 private community. We'll do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You'll have access to my portal full of resources to help you through these type of divorces specifically. And with that, I will see you in my next video.